Welcome to uh, Data Spaghetti to Data Buffet with DBT at NOV, where I will talk about how we rewrote um, a monthly data pipeline from Informatica Power Center uh, to DBT. My name is Karolina Winter. I'm a senior data engineer at NOV uh, since 2020. And I've been a professional data practitioner since 2012, where I've worked both as a power market analyst and I've worked in the processing team of the 2018 New Zealand Census. So what is DBT? It's basically a tool that lets you write uh, modular code to transform and create objects in your database using SQL and Python. And it comes in two versions. It's DBT Core, which is the free version, and then it's DBT Cloud, which is a paid version, which has some extra functionality that I don't know that much about because we have DBT Core um, at NAV. So you can basically download it, and it comes with a CLI, a command line interface, and you can write dbt in it, uh, your project, and it will initialize your project, um, set up your uh, database adapter, and it will also set up this folder structure for you. Uh, you don't need all the folders. Basically, in the models folder, that's where you will put all your um, SQL code. Uh, and you, it comes with a couple of examples, actually, when you set it up. Uh, this way, and you can just write dbt run or dbt test, um, and there's a lot of commands you can write. And I will show a little bit more uh, details later. Uh, first, I'll just tell you a little bit about uh, NAV. It's Norwegian uh, Norway's Welfare Association. Uh, we serve around half the population every year and we handle around a third of the national budget. And my team, um, I work in the data warehouse, and my team works with the um, work-related benefits, and we make data that goes into the official statistics. So the work-related benefits are dagpenger, arbeidsavklaringspenger, tiltakspenger, and tilläggstönader. Uh, I'm not going to translate those. Um, but we are also... Um, required by law to provide statistics uh, to the people about uh, how many people, where they live, uh, who are they. And for example, uh, this is uh, an example of the data that my team um, makes. Um, and it's the number of people who receive Arbeitsavklaringspenger uh, per month. So. My team, uh, we have um, inherited a lot of uh, um, data pipelines that uh, some consultants built a long time ago, uh, and they're written in Informatica Power Center, which is a graphical drag and drop um, tool. And that's all fine, mostly because it's, uh, it was running every month without problems. But uh, in March 2023, we got a request uh, to rerun every month between 2010 and 2020. Um, and that's 120 months. Um, <laughs> and um, this is not, I mean, you would think this was an easy task to do. Um, I mean, the, uh, the reason why they wanted us to rerun it was because there was an error um, in the original code that included people who also had an etibetaling, like a post payment, and they were not supposed to be counted in the statistics, but uh, they were, and they had been post processing and trying to remove them, but they actually wanted the data to be good, which is fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> But for my team, because uh, the Informatica uh, Power Center workflow consisted of um, a lot of mappings and sessions, and our, for our team, our um, expert in this tool had just quit, or he'd left the team, but he did send us a list of 13 steps uh, that you could do to rerun one month. 
so 120 months with 13 manual steps, and I calculated this would take one developer around eight weeks just to do this task. Um, so not only is it really boring uh, and you don't learn anything, and but also it's quite risky to do this. It involved like opening parameter files and changing it to the current month and then rerunning a workflow from the middle of the workflow um, because you didn't want to overwrite that parameter file. And yeah, really uh, tedious. So we decided um, instead to rewrite the whole run in uh, code. This would give us more control and ownership of the workflow and it would be easier to change things um, for the future as well. Uh, so to understand how the current workflow was made, we dug a little bit in Confluence and we found this uh, document which is from a meeting um, almost exactly 14 years ago, which is uh, called NAV DVH AP Statistik Overlevering til Forvaltning, which is basically a meeting where the consultants met with uh, some IT uh, people and it was kind of the handover of now we've built what you wanted, uh, here you go. And actually it's, it's fun to click through the slides because it's also like this we didn't get around to do, so <laughs> good luck. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so this is what Informatica Power Center looks like. Um, and 34 of those sessions consisted of the monthly run that we wanted to redo. So we had to, first we had to understand what the different um, mappings and transformations did. So this is uh, <laughs> part one of the spaghetti. Uh, sorry to continue the <laughs> food analogy, food and data analogy from this morning for the people who were here, but sorry, not sorry, it's, it's a good analogy. So you don't have to read all the um, little writings, but it's a lot of work actually to make this document because you have to click around and sometimes the documentation was on the workflow level, uh, sometimes there was some documentation in Confluence, sometimes not, uh, sometimes you had to click around into like the specific transformations and you click through the tabs and there's a little bit of an explanation of what's happening. But even after doing this, we weren't really ready to rewrite it because uh, the thing that was made uh, 14 years ago isn't necessarily what's needed today. So we also tried to do a little bit of mapping out who uses the data and what's actually uh, needed. So this is the part two of the spaghetti. Um, yeah, so it turns out our data was used for a lot of things and a lot of the data were not actually used. Uh, so we could have a go at rewriting the workflow. Uh, and we started out with Python and SQL because those were tools that we knew how to use. Um, and it was so nice to start working in code. <laughs> uh, we could rerun things, we could write, um, run all the months in a loop uh, so you didn't have to like manually sit there and click. Um, there was still a little bit of uh, uh, annoying things like you would write documentation and then it would immediately be out of date because you added a column or you changed the names of things. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, we had some colleagues at NAV who started using DBT and it looked quite cool. Um, and dbt is basically SQL and Python, so it was really easy to just put it into the um, dbt structure. And you can just press dbt run and it would actually do all the months uh, at the same time. Um, so you get um, data lineage. Uh, this is just a part of the data lineage, which is um, made from the code, uh, so it's always correct, uh, always up to date, and you can click around, it, um, you can write dbt docs generate, and it will generate a set of HTML files that you can host for everyone enough to see how your uh, data pipeline is built up, to see what the columns mean, and you can click on them and see what's in there, uh, how it's made. Uh, so this is the buffet.
So here's a little bit more details about what dbt looks like. Um, so you have the models folder, which is where you put your actual SQL code. Um, and dbt has like a lot of documentation about how you should do things. Uh, what's a good idea? Like obviously all the projects are uh, different, but they recommend uh, dividing up your models in uh, intermediate or staging, intermediate and marts. Staging is basically the source near data. And then the intermediate is where you do like your joins and your heavy um, heavy work, and then the mart says what you actually share to the users. So here's just an example of an intermediate model where you uh, you can probably recognize uh, this as SQL code. Uh, so you basically you reference your source um, data or your stage data, stage Fuxta and others are source data. And uh, the curly brackets is like dbt uh, templating syntax. So you reference another, another model. And this is also how it makes your data lineage for you. And you can, put, uh, you can make macros um, if you need to. So we have this uh, macro that looks at what um, environment you're in, if you're in uh, dev or prod. And yeah, so you write, this is a common table expression, a CTE in SQL. So you, and then you just aggregate, you see who's had a payment uh, each month, and you get the latest row. So you can count how many people receive money each month. Uh, it's not that complicated. Um, but it actually, it, it's, this is a little bit simplified, and there are a lot of models. Um, because you have to pull in a lot of sources and do a lot of lookups. But it takes, we run it uh, every month in Airflow, uh, and it takes uh, 34 minutes. So this, I would say, is a pretty big improvement from eight weeks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, so we're pretty happy about that. Um, and it's been running for maybe half a year now, and we've been running both uh, models uh, or pipelines in parallel, but actually last week we finally we turned off all the 34 sessions in Informatica Power Center. So that was really nice. Um, <laughs> yeah. So another uh, thing in the data engineering or data warehousing is how to handle changes in your source data over time. Uh, so for example, uh, you have your source system, and it has a VETAC ID, like an uh, ID of your case, and a status, and a date uh, when it's updated, or timestamp. And the next day, um, or this is the 1st of October, the 2nd of October, the status has gone from pending to approved, and it's overwritten in your source system. But obviously, uh, Nav needs to know how long was the status pending. And obviously, this is a fictitious example because Nav is not known for having such short processing times. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on it. In your data warehouse, this could look something like uh, this on the 1st of October. You have a valid from and a valid to, and you just set a really big valid to date. And then on the 2nd of October, you add a row uh, with a new status, and you update the previous row with a valid two. And this way you know the status every, um, every day, and you know how long the status has been pending. In Informatica Power Center, uh, this operation could look something like this, um, where you have a router transformation, uh, which looks at your data, so you have also a MD5 um, hash uh, expression, where you check, has is it this a new row? Then you insert it. If it's an updated row, you have to both do an insert of the new row, and you have to update the previous row with the new high valid to date. Uh, so this is pretty complicated, and you have to do a lot of clicking around. and. 
in DBT, you have a snapshots folder, and this is actually um, not been simplified, this file. This is how you would write it in DBT. You write a snapshot um, where you basically configure your snapshot to see to say what's the unique key. Um, you can have a time stripe time timestamp strategy. It's the kind of the common way, or you can have like just if you want to um, check just a few columns, there's another strategy. And you say what the uh, date column is and your target schema and your the table that you want to check. So that's basically it, and you run it every day, and it works uh, really well. So uh, this is my last slide. Um, I don't think I have to convince you guys that uh, code-based is better than the click-based tools. <laughs> <laughs> but there is still a little bit of work to do at NAV. Um, but the reasons why it's better, I mean, there are many reasons that you can, uh, my team is now able to change things. We can add columns, we can change the names of things. Uh, it's all on GitHub. Um, the documentation automatically updates. Um, it's so easy to figure out how things are calculated. <laughs> you know, you can just search instead of having to click around to find out <laughs> what workflow, what transformation. Um, and you have also tests. I didn't talk about uh, tests, but you can write your tests in your data. You can check your uh, not null and uniqueness and um, a lot of things. And we should also not gloss over uh, the whole developer experience. It's been talked about before today. Um, but I think it's really important because how is NAV going to attract uh, data engineers and also retain uh, data engineers if the tools that we have are um, hard to work with? So yeah, thank you for listening. <laughs>